little bit out of the eighth chapter of the book of Proverbs concerning now the wisdom that was in God from the time of creation. And of course, we proved you in we our last like program for joining that Brother Paul Rowe said we. Now, this is the way the apostles taught. We preach Christ. Yo. All righty then. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, children, I want to greet you and welcome you back today to the program. And I'm going to be taking you now into the book of Proverbs a little more. And I want to rehearse what I was uh, teaching on our last program now concerning the wisdom of God, because children, God always had his word or his wisdom with him. And what we want us to understand now is the mystery that a lot of the minds of the carnal leaders that's claiming to be the prophets and preachers of our day, they've hid the truth from the mind of the people and trying to separate God and divided him into three distinct persons, children. And this is a worldwide teaching now that began with a nascent degree or decree that went out in about 325, somewhere through that area. And children, what we need to realize now that the Lord has never been separated from his glory and his power. And what you need to realize now that when we're speaking of what John said in St. John chapter 1, that the word was with God. We need to understand now that that word with did not separate Christ from being God. Because most of you do know that he was the word and the word was made flesh. But now if you read John 1 and 1, the Bible said the word that was with God was God. And then the word was made flesh. So we need to understand this because God is bringing his people back to that unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God because children, if we don't get in his will and his knowledge, then you're going to be tossed to and fro. And that's why God sent his word to deliver us. And children, I want you to notice something again. And... Uh, in this 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs, I'll just go ahead and start at verse 14 again. Now, if it sounds like I'm repeating last program, well, I am to a, a degree to show you now that we're talking about Christ being more than just an ordinary man that went to the cross of Calvary. If you'll notice here in verse 14, this is the wisdom of God speaking to and Solomon is the one doing the writing, of course. And God said, cancel his mind and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. 
Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance at your faith and I will fill their treasures. Now, verse 22 said, the Lord possessed me. We're talking about wisdom. If you read the beginning of the eighth chapter of Proverbs, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old, God just took his good wisdom and began to create. And he had the mind that did all of this on his own. God didn't need no help. But the world thinks he did. But now, if you'll notice here something I want to show you. When he said in verse 14, cancel his mind and sound wisdom, I am understanding I have strength. I want you to listen to something that Isaiah prophesied concerning the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, I know he's not welcome among a lot of the religions of this world, and they want to deny his deity. But children, as God is my helper, if you notice Isaiah 9 and verse 6, the Bible said, For unto us a child is born. Now this is no ordinary child. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name, children, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Now listen, the zeal, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And buddy, that was God's desire to delight with the sons of men. He's always, after he created Adam and mankind and womankind, he's always, thank God, had a delight to be with the sons of men. See, there are angels in heaven, but children, men was God's delight on earth because he wanted them to choose and serve him by being obedient to him. Now, We're going to be showing you these things because it's important that we come to that knowledge of the Son of God. There's no way we deny Jesus of being the Son of God. But children, he was more than what your world is giving him credit. Now, in the book of 1 Timothy, we're going to get into these. Third chapter, 16th verse, honey, it wouldn't do me no good. It wouldn't do you no good to get in a big argument over who Jesus is. Because whether I give you my opinion or you give me your opinion, or if you get a big cancel like they did in 325 and form up a, a, a doctrine separating the true God and divide him into three persons, let me tell you something. That cancel will come to naught. God's going to bring us all into judgment. And your Bible in the book of 1 Timothy 3.16 said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now there's no use of me sitting around arguing about it. Ain't nothing you can say against the truth that will prosper you. You can only stand for the truth. It's without controversy. There's no argument. He was who he said he was. And the world don't like that. Of course, the devil's the father of the lies. But Jesus' children is the one that possesses all the fullness and power of God. That's why as we read you in our last program in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 
that we preach Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Now, when it said a child would be born, that was the birth of Jesus. A son would be given. And children, he had a name. Listen to me. That God highly exalted above every name. Let me repeat that. God highly exalted him. Gave him a name that's above every name. Now who are you out there or me or anybody else that wants to come against that name? Wouldn't do you a bit of good. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby that we can be saved. And the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. But yet, children, a lot of people don't want his name. But did you know this child? And I believe we all know that was the birth of Jesus in Isaiah 9 and 6. The Bible said his name. And did he say himself that I come in my father's name? Well, his name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And what about Isaiah 7? You're talking about a good Jesus preacher Isaiah was. And if you'll read now Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Now this is written from the prophets of the Jews. See, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel. Now, in the New Testament, most of you know that that was the birth of Jesus and that little virgin's name was Mary. But did you know Isaiah spoke about him? and said his name would be called Emmanuel. And did you know the interpretation of Emmanuel has already been given in Matthew 1 and 18 on down whenever that Matthew wrote that his name would be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted, come on, is God with us. Now, that's your revelation God's are preaching for these last days and bring us to that understanding of him so we won't be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. But now, if you'll notice here, Solomon is writing you concerning God's wisdom. And God said, cancel his mind, verse 14, and sound wisdom, I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. By me, princes decree justice. By me, princes rule. See? And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Nobody has no power without him. Now watch. I love them that love me. Those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruits better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness. That's the good wisdom of God that he gives through the Spirit. Now watch. In the midst of her pass of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. I will fill her treasures. Then he said in verse 22 to fulfill exactly what John was saying in John chapter 1 and also 1 John chapter 1. Now watch this. The Lord possessed me, wisdom, in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. What did he say? When there was no depths, I brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. He spoke it all in existence. While as yet he had made... He had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, which is man. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree, 
that his water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him, now watch, as one brought up with him, and thank God I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. So children, I'm going to show you that that's definitely speaking about Christ before he was ever made flesh. Honey, you know that he was the one that was in the midst walking among them two little children, Adam and Eve, when he said he heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. Christ loved to visit his people. But this is a mystery until you begin to read and study. Now, if you will, let's go right quick to the book of St. John, chapter 1. Now, remember, everything God did, he possessed his wisdom to do it. Let's show you that was Jesus. And that's what he gives to you is the same wisdom that was in him when we give earnest heed to his word because the word is the wisdom of God. We call it the Holy Bible, but this truly is the Word of God. Now, everybody go with me to St. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Listen to the Scripture. Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now what are we saying? The same in the beginning with God. Because the Lord possessed His wisdom. What was made flesh was what God had from the beginning and that's the part of God that had to be made flesh, His Word. And I'm going to show you that was definitely His person, His image because we were created in the likeness of the word Christ. But children, Jesus did not just begin when he was born in Bethlehem. He was from everlasting. And John said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now did the Bible say without him there was nothing made that was made? Now remember us reading you, when there was no depths, I was there. Before he established the earth, I was there. Honey, what are we talking about? The person of Christ. That was your creator, children, but he had to come out of that glory and give himself as a lamb, a sacrifice. Because there was nobody worthy, no man in heaven or anywhere worthy. Because according to the creation, from Adam all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, Jesus said himself, you're from beneath and I'm from above. He had to come down here and give his life. And he took on himself flesh and blood to do that. Now, Bible teaches about him here through John, and it said in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. That was John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. See, he was the forerunner. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light. Not John, but the one that John was bearing witness of. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now listen to verse 10. He, he was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Come on, children. Did the Bible say, and the world was made by him, and yet the world knew him not? We are talking about Jesus Christ. That's why he's hated 
among the idols of this world, especially those spirits that hate him. Did you know that God said we were one time Gentiles carried away unto dumb idols even as we were led? We ought to be more grateful now that God has revealed himself. Because children, when you start studying the scriptures and search the word of God, you're going to know who's your God for this last day. Honey, people don't know who to believe anymore. But you believe the word of God. That's what's going to count. And the Bible said he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Now watch verse 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Now wasn't that Christ coming to the lost sheep of Israel? Sure it was. Listen. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. See? Which were born. Now he was a born child, not of blood, like we've told you before, not human blood, but yet he had his own. Nor of the will of the flesh. Come on. It wasn't a planned child by Joseph or Mary. Nor of the will of man. But of God, it was the Lord that brought this child into the world. And John said, and the word was made flesh, come on, and dwelled among us. Now listen, and we beheld his glory. Whose glory? God's glory. The Lord of glory. Come on. We beheld his glory, the glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The only child that was ever born into this earth, not by the will of man, not by the will of the flesh, but children, not of human blood, but of God. The only begotten son means the only son that was birthed into this world without a human being doing it. Now, Mary carried him. You better believe it. But she was a little virgin, fulfilling Isaiah 7 and 14. And children, that child in her was most definitely God with us. Not one of them, but God himself manifest in the flesh. Now it's a mystery, but how he did it, the Holy Ghost just overshadowed that little virgin and put that seed within her, the word. And it became flesh and blood, not by Murray, not by Joseph, not by Jewish blood. But he purchased the church with what? His own blood. Honey, you read Hebrews 2, 14. He took on himself. Himself took it on him. Flesh and blood. Murray was a child, a little virgin, that he chose to bring the fulfillment of Isaiah and birthed him into the world. And you know I've told you this before when Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she's found favor with God and she's going to conceive in her womb and bear a son and you're to call his name not son but Jesus. And she said, How shall these things be? Seeing I know not a man, see? And he told her that the Holy Ghost would come up on her. What is that Holy Ghost? The power of the highest. The Holy Ghost is the spirit and the power of Jesus Christ. And it would overshadow her, thank God, and that holy thing, that baby born to her, would be called the only begotten Son of God. Now children, you don't never read anywhere where there's another religion that ever had a child to be born in that manner. Now they've got all these other ways out here, but children, there's only one true prophet of God that fulfilled what the Lord told Moses concerning the children of Israel. They were afraid to look up on him. So Moses, they said, we'll believe you. You, Whatever God tells you, you're a prophet, we'll obey you. Lord said you've well spoken because I'm going to raise you up a prophet as Jesus from among you like unto me, like unto Moses, somebody that had a law for you. 
but it was the law of the Spirit. And every soul that will not hear that prophet would be destroyed. Honey, there's no other foundation can anybody lay you that'll get you to God other than the Lord Jesus Christ. You can bet your life eventually there are going to be laws forcing people to not teach. Tell them you can't teach that there's only one way. We're already about considered a cult and so forth. But Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. And if you could understand his birth, you could see why. Because he come out of that tomb with all power in heaven and earth. And children, John was a barren witness of him. But if you'll notice here in verse 14 of John 1, and the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld or saw his glory. They looked at the glory of God, but it was in a veil of flesh. It's why people need to understand this. Sure to look at him, he looked like any other little Jewish child, no doubt. But he was the king. And what he got in trouble for is be called him because he'd tell of many good works I've showed you for my father. Which of these do you stone me? See, they wanted to kill him because they said he blasphemed. He was a man saying he was God. And children, you better believe he was. And they didn't want him that way. But that's what Jesus said they'd be blinded to. But listen what he was full of. The word was made flesh, dwelled among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See? Verse 18. No man has seen God at any time. Now preachers love that. But when they love it in their manner, they're denying Jesus himself when he looked at Philip. When Philip said, Lord, show us the Father in John 14, and it sufficed us. And Jesus said, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? He's the only man that brought God to this earth. See? Now, listen to it again. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is what? In the bosom of the Father. He has declared Him. He came out of that bosom, out of that glory, and manifested Himself so we could know God. Children, we're coming to that hour. We're going to have to know the true God because a man of sins are coming. And what's he going to sit as? God. And oppose everything it's called God. So it's going to pay us to know these things. Now, you'll have to stay with me. I see my time about up. But we're going to be continuing in this. I'm just showing you these things, children, so we can understand when you read Jesus praying to the Father and saying that my Father's greater, you've got to understand how He was greater. Because He was there in person, in flesh, and His Spirit was filling the earth and heavens. And yet in him too. So it's a mystery that God has brought to us, but we're going to have to read and understand it. It's all in the book. So be sure to stay with me in our next program. We appreciate you writing us, sending you prayer requests, and we thank God for everybody with us in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.